Hey all, hope you all are doing well. Today we are going to discuss the order of draw in blood collection in which we will see definition of order of draw, what is additive carryover and what are the various tests which can get affected by additive contamination. But before going in the detail, please subscribe my YouTube channel that is Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it. So this is the picture showing the different vacutainers which are used for the blood collection in clinical laboratory. First, light blue colored tube is called as a sodium citrate tube. It is used for the coagulation studies. Second, lavender colored tube. It is called as a EDTA tube which is used for the CBC as well as for the HbA1c estimation. Then red colored tubes that are called as a pain tube which are used for the serum separation. Green colored tube, it is called as a heparin tube. Yellow color tube, it is called as a gel separator tube. Black color tube, it is called as a ESR tube. And the gray color tube, it is called as a fluoride tube, which is used for the glucose estimation. You can also watch my previous video for more details on the vacutainers and its uses. So now, order of draw. So order of draw, it is a special sequence of tube collection that reduces the risk of specimen contamination by microorganisms and additive carryover which affect some chemistry test. Now additive carryover. So additive carryover can occur when blood in an additive tube touches the needle during venipuncture or during transfer from a syringe. And EDTA carryover causes more problem than any other edit additives and heparin causes least. Now order of draw as per the clinical and laboratory standard of institute. The first tube in the order is blood culture bottles which are also called as a sterile tubes because it minimizes the risk of microorganism contamination. The first additive tube in the order is coagulation tubes or sodium citrate tubes because additives present in the other tubes affects coagulation test very much. The third tube in the order which is collected after the coagulation tubes, it is the pain tubes or the serum separation tubes because silica present in the serum separation tube, it activates the clotting as well as it affects the coagulation test. Fourth tube in the order of draw is heparin tubes because heparin interfere with the coagulation test as well as it also interfere with the serum specimen collection. Fifth tube in the order is EDTA tube. EDTA carryover causes more problem than any other additives. This EDTA elevates the sodium and potassium levels. It can delay and reduce the calcium and iron level. And the last tube in the draw is sodium fluoride tube. Sodium fluoride tube again it interferes with the sodium and potassium level. Now, common test affected by the additive contamination. So this is the table showing the contaminating additive and the test potentially affected by them. So, if the contaminating additive is the citrate, then it can affect the alkaline phosphatase level that is called as ALP, calcium, and phosphorus. If the contaminating additive is the EDTA, then it can affect the ALP, calcium, creatinine kinase, partial thromboplastin, potassium, thrombin time, serum iron, and sodium level. If contaminating additive is the heparin, then it can affect the activated clotting time, acid phosphatase, calcium, partial thromboplastin, thrombin time, sodium if there is a presence of sodium formulations, and lithium if there is a presence of the lithium formulation. If the contaminating additive is the sodium fluoride, then it can affect the sodium as well as the urea nitrogen. This is my reference. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it. Thank you.